Talk more about the hurdles that prevented the project from happening. We're joined by economist Max Frad-Wolf. Uh, thanks very much for coming on to the programme this evening. Um, now, Vladimir Putin says Bulgaria acted against its own interests uh, by not giving the pipeline the go-ahead. Let's first start by listening to exactly what Mr Putin said. Our Bulgarian partners always said that they were determined to realize the South Stream project because it is in line with their national interests, but unfortunately it didn't happen. If Bulgaria was not allowed to act as a sovereign state, it should at least demand compensation from the European Commission for the money that they didn't earn. That project would have brought 400 million euro in revenue annually to the Bulgarian budget. But at the end of the day, it seems that our Bulgarian partners have some sort of obligations. Some sort of obligations, Mr. Putin clearly alluding to EU pressure. Do you think that's a fair comment? Yeah, look, I mean, I think there's a lot of moving pieces here, and we may be getting part of the story from Bulgaria and part of the story from Mr. Miller there at, at Gazprom or various officials, including up to Mr. Putin and the Russian government. But the truth is here, this was a way to go under the sea, go around Ukraine in light of the crises and gas issues in 2006 and 2008 that we saw there. And that ran into EU and Western sanction pressures, which are kind of hitting an apex here. And it is very clear that Bulgaria has tied its future to the European Union, and the European Union does not enjoy a particularly favorable relationship with Russia right now. And the South Stream project looks like yet another casualty of sanctions and poor relations between Russia and the West. Do you think today's announcement will shock Bulgaria because it appears to have come out of the blue to a certain degree? Yeah, well, I think we saw the tensions building. I think the hope was, look, Europe still needs Russian gas. Nothing's changed there. Bulgaria still needs income. And there's got to be a way to do this that goes around Ukraine, given the intensity of the conflict there and what looks like a near-term situation where there will continue to be a lot of, of issues with going through Ukraine. That being said, there are, of course, other pipelines. If you look at the trip Mr. Putin's taking, it seems to be going pretty well to Turkey. Obviously, that's another route that was announced at the same time that the proposed South Stream channel was kind of closed. But I think what we're seeing here is the fallout from sanctions, fallout from some trouble between Russia and various Western institutions in the U.S. and the European Union. And if we're going to be completely honest here, it'd be hard to believe that Bulgaria dictates European Union policy. Um, Mr. Putin also mentioned during this press conference the likelihood of a gas hub transit sort of zone on the border with Turkey and Greece, and then said, you know, that might leave the door open in the future for Europe. I mean, this is quite a clever move, isn't it, from Russia? It's obviously assuming that later, um, later on down the line, tensions would have died down and perhaps business can resume as normal. Sure, well, there's a bit of a mismatch here, and I think that's what Mr. Putin's comments allude to fairly wisely, which is, look, we're having real problems now between the West and, and Russia, but the future will be a future in which Europeans need access to Russian gas. There's a couple ways to get it there. And the presumption and hope, I think, of all parties in good faith here is that today's tensions with Russia will not be permanent, but the need for gas and Russia's enormous supply of gas is, in, is at least for the next 20 or 30 years, a reality for Western Europe, full stop. Um, it wasn't just Mr Putin that was speaking today. We also heard from the head of Gazprom too, and he stressed the importance of the economic relations uh, between Russia and Turkey. We can just hear now uh, what he said about that. Turkey, without any doubt, is one of our largest buyers, and in 2014 it will take second place after Germany. It is our partner also in terms of expansion of our exports. Uh, I suppose that does show, doesn't it, that, that economics rules here because despite the political differences all these big trade deals are being signed sure and we've even seen in the last couple of months as the sanctions bite a bit into russia we've seen a lot of various farm products coming from turkey into russia so part of what's happening here is russia is taking advantage of the fact that large portions of the world very much want access to its lucrative markets as imports for Russia exports for those countries, as well as the fact that people need and want gas, particularly discounted gas, and that's not going to change. And last but not least, there's a constellation of other countries that will take over contracts if the United States or the European Union can't or won't take them over for any number of geopolitical reasons. OK, well, look, thanks very much for your thoughts on this. Uh, we have to leave it there. That was uh, economist Max Frad-Wolf. Thank you.